Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Nothing that you can do will get you in heaven, only the grace of God, because everything that you do is like, you are like filthy rags to, to the Father. Okay, so people in the world call themselves the Jews as a whole people. Who, who out here calling themselves children of God? The so-called white, so white man, right? They the ones, if you say you a real Jew, they taking your job. They destroying your life. They might even put you to death. They the ones portraying on TV uh, the Ten Commandments movie with Charleston Hester that they the, orig that they the original children of Israel, that they the real children of Israel. Our people don't know that. We don't know that. So, but guess what Christ say about them people that cause themselves Jews but are not? Read. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Read that again. Synagogue of what? Synagogue of Satan. Of what? Satan. Of what? Satan. So what is Christ calling these people like Max Kellerman, Harvey Weinstein, Jimmy Iovine? What is he calling these people that claim they're Jews, but they really not? The synagogue of Satan. Exactly. That's they're the right. synagogue of Satan. So Mike, uh, Terrell, right? Y'all understand the difference on us being the real Jews, how our land was taken, and the people that call themselves Jews today, they're not the real Jews. You understand that, right? All right, now, I got something for you because, uh, give me uh, Isaiah 58 and 1. Because the Most High God actually gave us a job once we start learning our nationality, learning the commandments, which we gonna get more into. Because that's why we out here to show our people where we, they went wrong and show them how to get on the right track. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression. So the Most High God said, told us to cry aloud. That's why we on 60th and Silver Spring, and I'm pretty sure you can hear us down the block because we got this loudspeaker. He said, raise up our voice like a trumpet. We were sent here to warn the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that you must repent because destruction is coming. That's right, this that's place right. is not going to last forever. Yeah. It is not going to last forever. We must change before destruction come. Read. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression. It says, show my people their transgressions. Do you know what you, you know what a transgression is? Somewhat. What about you, Mike? Sin. It's sin, exactly. Just like it say in 1 John 3 and 4. Show our people our sins. Why is it important to know your sins? So you can know what, uh, what God requires of you. It's, it, yeah, exactly right. Let's get that in Deuteronomy 10 and 12. That's going to segue us. So if you know where you're going wrong, 
you gonna know which path you need to be on to get it right, all right? You got that? Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Bring it out. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Jump down. Verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. All right, so God requires us to keep the commandments. That's how we are no longer being sin, by keeping his laws. So what we're here to do today is show you your sins and show you how you can stop sinning. Let's get Numbers 15 and 38. Because the commandments are not hard to keep. The commandments are very easy to keep. One commandment is having a beard. Y'all know y'all are not supposed to shave your beard, right? Is that hard to keep a beard? No, it's not hard at all. All the commandments are just as easy as keeping your beard. Read. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Read it out. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring. All right, so a lot was brought out right here, but I'm gonna explain it to y'all. Cause like I said, the commandments is very easy to keep. The church just lie to you and tell you no man can be perfect and no man can keep the commandments. But that's not true at all, read. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. All right, so God told Moses to speak to Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Remember, we brought that out, that Moses was speaking to Israel only in Deuteronomy 1 and 1. He's still talking to Israel. Throughout the Bible, they were still talking to Israel, from See, Moses all the way to Christ. They only right. dealt with us. He said, make fringes in the borders of your garments. Brothers, I want y'all to look around at all the men in purple. What do y'all notice what we have at the end of our clothes? These are called fringes. Come forward, come forward. I want to show you something. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure you got Native Americans in your family. A lot of us do around here, right? So you remember the Native Americans used to wear them too. They got that from the Bible. Right. They knew it came from the Bible. So he said, wear fringes. Read. Fringes in the border of their garments throughout their generations. How long? Throughout their generations. How long? Throughout their generations. Let me ask you a question, brother. How long is throughout your generations? You said how long? Okay, so if God is commanding you to wear these forever, where did the church get that the laws are done away with? That we ain't got to keep the commandments? Bring it out, Al. Something's wrong let me, here. Let me say what, what I heard about it. I heard that nothing you can do will get you into heaven. I think I read this. Only the grace of God. Because everything you do is uh, like a pussy rag. I got you, Mike. Let's go ahead and go to Matthew 19. So Mike brought out another statement which is taught in the Christian church a lot to our people. He said it ain't nothing that you can, repeat it again, just to make sure I heard you correctly. Nothing that you can do will get you in heaven, only the grace of God, because everything that you do is like, you are like filthy rags to, to the Father. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm a touch that situation. I'm gonna I'm a show you how you can get into heaven and how and what grace is and what you must do while you're on this earth before Christ return. Because Christ ain't returning hundreds of years down the line. We don't know the exact time, but we do know it's soon. Just look around at what's going on. Read that for me. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. Just slow it down a little bit, read. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life. So the question, the statement was that we can't do anything to get into the kingdom of heaven. It's just done by grace. All right, so we had a brother asking Christ, 
What can I do to get eternal life? Ain't that the kingdom of heaven? Let's see what Christ said. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Read that again. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. So you see how our people claim they're Christians, right? So a Christian's supposed to be Christ-like, right? Christ was humble enough, even though he was sent to give his life for his people, he like, nah, bro, don't call me good. Our people don't display that same action of humbleness, if that's a real word. Our people don't display that humility if they're supposed to be Christ-like. But he like, nah, don't call me good. The Most High God is good. My Father, our Father. Read. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou will enter into life. So if you want to enter into life, which is the kingdom of heaven, read. Keep the commandments. Call and read the scripture again. This is the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So if you want to get the kingdom of heaven, what must you do? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments, right? That's plain and simple. But like the church told us, nobody can keep the commandments. They told us that we was under grace. Let me ask you a question. What does grace mean? And once we get back at... Once we get back into, once we go over grace, we gonna get back into the commandments. Cause that's what's supposed to, that's what's helping us, is keeping the commandments. All right, what is grace? Forgiveness. It's forgiveness, what is grace? The book of Titus chapter two and verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. I'm going to have them read it again, because this is what grace is. Hey, as the sirens go by, we hear this all the time in our neighborhoods, right? That's another curse, too. You will never hear this in the so-called Jewish man neighborhood. And it's, like I said, the ghettos is the same everywhere. It's the same everywhere. Right. Every five, ten minutes you hear sirens rolling by. That's how you know we curse. Read. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. So we going into grace. Grace appeared unto all Israelite men and women. Not right. everybody. Read. Teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lust. What does grace teach us? Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. What does grace teach us? Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Read. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So, Mike, what is grace according to the Bible? What is grace supposed to do? Say that one, read, that, read it one more time. Read it again. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So, so grace is supposed to do what? Salvation. No, grace is supposed to teach us to not sin. Deny ungodly lust. That's sin. We supposed to do righteously. According to Deuteronomy 6 and 25, righteousness is keeping the commandments. So grace is giving us enough. And brother, come forth, because you said time, right? It's just like I got a light bill, right? Or I got, uh, let's say if I got Charter Network, uh, the cable company, right? And I need the internet. And the bill is due on the 30th. If I, can't pay, if I can't pay the bill on the 30th, I'm going to call Charter and ask for grace to give me more time to what? Teach, Chuck. To pay the bill, right? So grace 
ain't giving you a, more time to be out here selling drugs to your people, to be out here being a whoremonger, to be out here uh, shooting your brother down in the street, to be out here eating swine, to be out here buying and selling on the Sabbath, to be out here as a cis. I, I, I know you're listening, but I got to touch this. Grace, also, you're not supposed to be in, be out here wearing menly attire. Because as a sister, you royalty. You're a princess. You're supposed to have a dress on. Right. I know you didn't know that, but that's why we up here. I know I told you have a dress on, but I'm running to get my dress on. I just won't. Hey, but Christ can come back any minute. In the midst of you going to get your grandson, what that look like? You think he gonna care? You think he gonna say, oh, she gonna pick her grandson up? No, you already know you supposed to have a dress on. You know what they say, right? If you know better, you do better. And, and you gotta, and to you, right, you, and, and you ex exactly right. Uh, jump up in Titus, cause you right. Our people, our main thing is our people don't set forth the godly example. That's right. Our people don't set forth the godly example. We gonna start with the men first, and then we gonna start with our. We gonna go with our sisters next, cause our elders supposed to be setting an example to the younger men. We used to scream "Black Power" while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.